Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, so hibachi. If you've never been, the grill is the table. Like what they're cooking on is the table. So they fill every seat if possible. So if there's only two of you. You're gonna be at a table with other people because there's like eight or ten seats at the table. So hibachi. What he's talking about is like a type of how you cook food. Um, but you end up at a table with strangers, and it's awkward if you don't talk to them. Uh, which, if you're okay with being awkward, you can be awkward. Trust me, we can all be awkward. Um, we specialize. We specialize in awkward here in this class. That should be the next Phoenix shirt. One of the guys. Welcome to Phoenix. We specialize in awkward. One of the guys. Satya a favor. I'm sorry, if you have test different. revisions, test. Yeah. Revisions. Revisions on top. If you have holes, line them up. Staple this. Your name is on your revisions because Satya already made sure of that. And you just stick it in the bin. Papers that are sticking out, which I am kind of like not doing that anymore. Um, but anything that's sticking out means it's ready to be returned, and that's my reminder. I'm using manila foldings this year for like stuff that's done being graded and use manila as a color. Um, but that, so just stick them in the bin, just, and then I'll know I need to take care of it. Like I need to grade it. Well, actually, I don't know if it's a color, but it's a type oh, of folding. It's like manila. manila. Wait, is it like, like, oh, vanilla. is it like the same oh, thing, like yellow? Yeah. Like, oh, is that, that be vanilla? Yellow? What? Oh, Can that be vanilla? Vanilla? No, I thought vanilla was like white with kind of little speckles of. Yeah. No, what? Sometimes it's yellow. Yeah, it's like real vanilla. Vanilla beans? Anyone else? Vanilla beans. Yeah, like ground up vanilla beans. All right, should we do some math? I mean, if we must. If we must. Okay, for anyone who's not here, which everyone is here, um, where did my smart? There you go. Three, one, two. Seventeen, twenty-two. That's our. Sorry, that's my. I looked over there and I got brainwashed. Have you ever seen a homework thing? You pick pen. I wrote my name. I wrote my name on it. There's no name homework over on the board. I had to do seven. Sorry, I lied. Yeah, last night you needed to do like seven or eight of those problems from the two sets. More is more is better. Yeah, I said 10 would be great, and then Rich or somebody asked, what's the minimum? And I said, okay, at least 7. So tonight, 17 to 22. Sorry, yeah, I looked over there, and I, I looked wrong. Um, I'll adjust the stuff over on the, the board. Um, my plan, just so you guys are aware. Okay, guys, it's, as you know, I went to a concert last night. I stayed up later than normal. I'm struggling. 29 to 34. As long as you guys know what's going on, I don't need to know what's going on. As long as you know. It's always review for you. All right, so here's what's up. Our plan is to get through all the 3.1s this week. So 3.1.5 by Friday, which makes sense with our pacing. And then next week, Monday through Thursday, we'll cover all the 3.2s. And then Friday, start the Chapter 3 Master. What? This is all timing out to bumping up against Discovery Day. So that's why the plan is as it is. Now, alternatively, you guys wanted to start Chapter 4 on that Friday instead of take the assessment. We could move the assessment to the next week, but we'll have that conversation next week after we do some more of these Wait, lessons. why are we going to that? Because you're high school math, too, and we have, like, fall chapters to get through, and we hey, got to move. Hey, we're already on the third one. Yeah. 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 Can we do 11? No. We could do 13. We could have skipped. Wait, how do we do 13? And Mr. Hall, Add a bonus chapter. Through, like, we went through then. a whole chapter in like, a, like two days. No, yeah. two days. And then he went Yeah, so we have 12 chapters. And guys, so like three, well, one of the reasons we're going so fast is chapters one and two wasn't a lot of new material, right? Three gets into some more like newer materials. But then, and you can go look at these, like chapter four is not super dense. It's only nine lessons, right? Chapter five, a little bit longer. It's like 11 or 12 lessons. Chapter six, same thing. Like, like so some of these chapters are longer. Seven is a short chapter. Um, eight's a shorter chapter. But like, we have a lot to cover. Uh, 
So, and like, so nine, I forget what nine is. Nine, oh, modeling. Yeah. What, which one's the one that has the fire at it? Uh, we start, we get there very soon. Like, very soon. How about we... Yeah. How about we just... How about me? What is N? All the quadratic equations. Okay. Alright. So we've effectively wasted five minutes. Should we math things? Yes. Okay. Probability models. As we talked about yesterday, we can use the array model and we can use the tree diagram. So the, the reason we use these are to kind of um, circle around these questions. Are our, or sorry, what are the possible outcomes? What do we call all possible outcomes when we look at like everything that can happen? What's that called? Sample space. Sample space. Thank you very much. So just a reminder on the vocab word. Are the outcomes going to be equally likely, like flipping a coin or rolling a die, versus a situation that actually has some bias on the outcomes? Um, will a tree diagram or area model be the most effective way to represent this? Like what if I'm going to flip a coin, roll a die, and then something else. No, tree diagram. Yeah, I can't area model, right? Mm -hmm. Unless I volume model. <laughs> oh, you could. Do you know how to volume model? Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that now. Jeez, bro, you don't know. You don't volume model? <laughs> Man, you're on my level. Bro, model. I can time and volume model. Bro, I can <laughs> model circles around you. Okay, and and quadratic functions. I can follow dimensions around you guys. I have dementia. Right. So. <laughs> I can walk the viewers around you. So. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to play Rochambeau. We're going to play Rochambeau. So. So. This works well if you're in four groups. So we have like a person left over. I get that. But just, you guys can figure this out. So here's what we're doing. One person is going to keep track of points while the other three people play. So list the names of the people in your team alphabetically. The first person is player A, then player B, then players that we're just going to make life easier, oh. right? Then, without playing the game, discuss what person you think will gain the most points. First, we have to do an election. We have to go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, one of them needs to bump over there, really. I bump um, up over there. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, you guys stay a four group. Oh. One of them needs to move into be a four group, and then we have an extra person yet. somewhere. Cool. Oh, so, you don't even know how people get points. Player A, but you don't get points for winning, guys. Player A gets a point if everyone matches. Player B gets a point if two out of three players match. Player C gets a point if nobody matches. Like, there's a definitive winner. Well, and there could be a definitive winner in, in player B's point, but player C is everybody's unique. So, kind of like playing a set, right? If we make a set, if everyone's unique, that's player C. Okay. How can everyone be getting unique in the group of three? Rock, paper, scissors, someone's keeping score. Oh! You're not listening, Sakia. Is this only three players, yeah. yeah. players, players Sakia? Yeah. Alright, so, first, because discussions go array sometimes, or awry, um, Write down your prediction. What will happen most? Will players matching be the most likely? Will two of the three outcomes be the most likely? Or are all outcomes be unique most likely? You write down your prediction. And you might write, like, I predict, so you know that you're not writing down, like, facts on your paper. What if they're all the same? Then that's your prediction. You write that. Wait. Experimentally, though, I doubt they come out to be the same. Yeah. Then, do the experiment. So, play rock, paper, scissors. Do, um, let's do like 12 rounds at least, so we can like potentially have everything be even, right? Play an amount of rounds that's divisible by three. Okay, so if you go past 12, you gotta go to at least 15. Okay. I'm not sure. So who is what points? I almost said one. I get B. Okay. 
No, you two go. No, 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 no we all. All, all three you throw. Oh, that's so why three I'm, people are going to So imagine this. So you, you guys and me. So oh. rock, paper, scissors, shoot. So we match. But he wins. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let's just say. Yeah, let's do this. All right. Three. 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 Scissors, scissors. So, Hunter, you were person A, right? So, your chances of getting a point. So, let's use appropriate notation, right? So, when we're talking about probability, we're going to say P of, and we can say like all match. Uh, except the H. Yeah, calm down. 
Yeah, it was like, my brain no. wants to write math. <laughs> it's what? 3 out of 27 or 1 ninth, right? The probability of 2 match. 2 match. Caveman lady. If we highlight those. Rock, rock, or rock, this rock, or rock, this rock. But I can't do that rock, right? Because then all three would match. Paper, 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 paper. All I can think of is Ben Vermeulen. Scissors, they sell paper. It's the office. Wait, why did they office? I think this game actually came down to strategy. No, no it did not. There is no, well, okay, no, there, there is one strategy. Is strategy. That's, the, That's best strategy. the only strategy. <laughs> and oh, the I probability, That's it. sorry, we need to go ahead and notate this. So what's probability we have two matches? So I should yeah, not have really nine, highlighted, nine. I shouldn't have really highlighted these. Nine? Because those well, don't count. Nine, uh, one, so one, two, three, four, yeah, five, nine. six, seven, eight, nine, right? Well, so I got like 19. No, it's no, 12. Because uh, two. Uh, oh, yeah, R's. those. There's two options uh, going from yeah. the RR. Oh, wait, wait, 12 out of 9. That would be 12. What? Wait, I just said 12 out of 9. Oh, you, you, oh, you, oh, you can come up to. I'm trying to make you guys have the dichotomy. Wait. Are we counting this oh. Wait, we're counting this yes. one here? Follow a oh, path and, and end, end up at a destination. Don't color over the thing with a pen. Use, Use a highlighter. highlighter. What are you doing? Use a highlighter. <laughs> Use a highlighter. <laughs> There's also a back button if you would like to undo mistakes. I would like to undo those mistakes. I got you. Back back back. I got you. Okay. okay. Hey, I we got this one. This one. We got... Jacob, can you move? Yeah, this one. You have to follow the path yeah, to the end. Uh, well, paper, rock, rock. So you cannot stop at level one and count those. You cannot stop at level two and count those. You have to count at the very bottom of your tree. So it's not nine, I tell you that for sure. I was just trying to get you guys to figure out what we have to do. This game has lost the strategy of who picks B. Oh wait, but I missed I missed the thing. Oh, that's what I tried to tell you. Scissors, paper, paper, scissors. Scissors, paper, scissors, scissors. One by person. Scissors, scissors, paper, and scissors, scissors. One. Let's count it up, children. I know. One. All right, now hold on. Do you understand why we highlighted what we have? Yes. Because even like oh, the weird yeah. ones or where you get scissors, paper, paper, or scissors, rock, rock, or like, that's kind of awkward. But then scissors, scissors cannot have a third scissor. So you have to have scissors, scissors, rock, paper. Those, those are great, like, both of those count because we already have our two matching, but we can't have three. And then there's also, like, paper, rock, paper. Yeah. Jacob, you were very yeah. adamant that it was 12. I, yeah. I, I know, I was saying 12 at first, and then I realized that I missed, I missed like, Guys, one minute. So, here's my advice. Don't highlight above the bottom. Because it's going to complicate things for your brain. Easiest way to think about this is take the entire path all the way through. So, like, rock, rock, and then not rocks, right? So I would highlight these because I already have my two rocks. Rock, paper, and a rock. Rock, scissors, and a rock. So like... So that means see it forever. No, wait, did you count blues and other ones? Blues and, blues and green. green. Blues and okay. green. Good. Making sure. So we had what, 18? So really, two thirds. Six out of nine. Oh yes, two thirds. Couldn't they both divide by nine? But six 
Cloud Nine would make it better because then it can compare it to the other answers. Then we make complementary values. So if we think about the fraction as six ninths, we've now talked about seven ninths. And this, what, all unique? Uh, wrong. 418. One four and a half. It's one four and a half. Okay. So if I follow the paths, just to verify that we understand how we get there, I need rock, paper, and then scissors. Or rock, scissors, and paper. I can't go rock, rock because then I'm already matching. Right? If I want all unique. Paper, rock, scissors. Paper, scissors, rock. Paper, paper, ruins it. Scissors, rock, paper. Scissors, paper, rock. Oh, that actually scissors, scissors, scissors ruins it. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six out of 27. Reduce it down to nice. Always follow it to the bottom. Yeah, Questions? Yeah, it's I'm glad you guys so quickly got upset and me trying to say nothing. I, I was trying to figure out what wrong answer to use to get you guys to follow it all the way down to the bottom, but you guys figured it out very quickly. Good for you. Like, genuinely good for you. Like, you guys are great. Hunter, trying to artificially dye your eyes green. Like, you can actually get tattoos on your eyes, right? Oh, my God, no. Gross. We've, we've gone too far. Okay, so <laughs> like society has gone too far. So All right, so if we look at this, is that volume on No. So check it. Read this. There's a school for there. Random tile and that's just the game. He's called Phoenix Fair. Two dollars. Phoenix Fair. Like, the worst game. Like, I, hope, I hope that this is far in the future where money, money. was a lot. Like and this is like one cent. Like $2 already isn't worth very much these days. Inflation just... So, if we want to figure out... If we want to figure out blue square, red circle, what would be an appropriate area... Good morning. Hi, everyone. Please come to the office. Hi, Apparently she changed her name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. Um, okay. I can't like keep up. You guys, I, I give up. I can't keep up. I didn't like What the would be, now I want you guys to talk with your group. What would be an appropriate model to represent the situation? Don't just solve it, but like how would we model this if you were trying to explain it to somebody? So here's your information, right? Bag of squares, bag of circles. Then you can play this. It costs you two dollars just to have two. Ah, ah. That's two dollars. That's eight bucks. Ten bucks. Ah, I don't even know what I win. Do you think that's fourteen dollars versus one? You're just really angry. Yeah, you win. Now you win. Now you win. Now you win. How many things are happening here? Two. Two. What's an appropriate model for two selections? Area model, right? Volume model. The volume model. So, and quantum model. If I don't leave my pen over here. One at six chance. Quantum realm time model. So, if we area model, I do squares and circles. Right, my squares. Three yellow, one blue, two red. So, if I go three yellows, if I try to make this accurately sized, yellow is three six, red red is two six, and blue is ninety four thousand. That sounds about right. Circles, one yellow, two reds. Uh, that's probably not accurate these days. Yeah, well, can you load the volume model? Quantum or physics model. Who's in here? Black hole. So we want. We want one blue square, one yellow circle. 
So right, it's a square, here. it's rounded at the corners. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's square. rounded at the corners. <laughs> Boy. It's <laughs> rounded. <laughs> That's an oxymoron. <laughs> CPM needs to realize what they've done. Let's write an angry letter. Dear CPM, I do not know who taught you the definition of a square, but in our class, we know that they have Also, your square is kind of like. <laughs> hey, do I judge you? Jacob, do I judge you? Yes. Actually, yes, because I have to assess your grades. So, yes. Like, never mind. Your argument is Alright, let's move on. So. I think I think we've all kind of determined our answer to this. Should Jerry and Marty play this game? No, no, no. no, no. no, no. <laughs> so, so that's an interesting thing to think about. So, so one cool thing that most kids, especially, don't realize: you know your chances of winning the lottery. What? I won the lottery. Well. How much? No. Tickets sold doesn't actually matter. Well, okay, it depends on what lottery we're talking about. If they sell Powerball. Like the if, like the Powerball. if you're talking about Powerball, it's still not one out of however many tickets are sold because people pick their numbers. Yeah, so multiple people could win. Multiple people could have the same number. So, while I was at the store the other day, I bought a couple lottery tickets to bring to school and be able to show you guys. You I did not win. Teach us this. Are I did you not sure? win. No, check it out, though. Your, these are $1 tickets, right? One dollar. So I, I wasted two dollars like Jerry and Marty would have if they played that game. Oh, what? Check this out. Oh, I just wasted one money. One in 4.83. So if you bought five of those, you would probably win. Now, yes, if they were stocked in rotation, but we don't know that they're... So just like Thomas just said, so we would need to spend twelve dollars in order to win this game. Doesn't guarantee you'll win. By probability... If I play this game six times, I should win one of the times. But why do you think the probability on these are different if they're both one dollar tickets? They are giving away different prizes and they're different. Mm. This is oh, I scratched off the stuff. The prizes on the lesser probability ticket, your one in four point five okay. or sorry, one. One in four point eight three is your lesser probability. These prizes go higher. The cash amount goes higher. So therefore, they have to lower their probability of winning. And but the lottery is really stupid. I want it to be something actually fun. And there are like there are more expensive tickets that are actually fun. But fun? like my winning numbers are eight and ten. If I match that, I get the prize shown. Like okay, that's so. Couldn't you just print the numbers on? Like why do I even have to scratch? Like. Couldn't you just tell me you won or you didn't win? Because like, there's really no game. You're not like doing anything. You're just revealing whatever. And this one is like if you get a chicken or something. <laughs> oh yeah, someone Reveal made a chicken. A, someone made a device uh. to go on a lottery machine, like really poor <laughs> made one, and actually scratch off the ticket and score. Yeah. You couldn't actually see it because it was transparent. <laughs> but so, sorry, real quick to wrap this up. The odds of getting a chicken. Right, that's one in four point whatever. But that's of winning something. What do you think the lowest prize is? A dollar. So even if you win, you didn't win anything. You got your money back. So the odds of actually profiting money are lower than that. Because it says odds of winning. Right? Well, the prizes start at a dollar. You didn't win anything, except for 12 seconds of enjoyment of scratching. <laughs> if you scratch real squat, you might get 15. Really so, we do play a game when we're traveling. Um, my brother and my wife and I often drive together to go south, and now his wife is part of that as well, since he got married. Um, we play a little game just to pass the time, where when we stop in a state, we buy a lottery ticket, and we can't scratch it until the next state. Because then you can't redeem it unless you go back to the state that you bought it in. <laughs> so then on the way back home, if we want anything, then we redeem. Like, because you can redeem it at any gas station. We like never win. Um, okay, that's not true. We have won. Um, on the last trip that we played this on, we ended up breaking even for the trip. Like we just 
we won a couple tickets, lost a bunch, but one of the ones that we won was like ten dollars on a two dollar ticket. So like we profited off that. Um, don't don't like. Well, I shouldn't say it. You can play the lottery if you want, but the odds are against you. Like, I mean, just just understand that when you go in. It's just like the casino. Can we, can we find the power hole? The power hole? Yeah, power hole. You can't. It's not calculatable. Are you sure? Yes, because you would have to know one what everyone chose, right? What numbers were chosen? Two, what number wins? Why am I blinking? And three, how many total tickets were sold? So even if we know how many to total tickets were sold, which we can know that, um, you can't really know your odds of winning. Yeah, that's like because they they can sell the same ticket twice. I want to make sure I show this to you guys um, before I totally run out of time because all today's lesson was about practicing choosing which model. So we'll probably do another problem, uh, but I wanted to talk about this. This mathematician, Michael Atia, has believed, well, he oh, believes yeah. that he has solved one of the Riemann hypothesis questions, which has with it a million dollar prize. So I say this, also, by the way, math counts tomorrow. So I say this as a four, encouragement. Four. Four, yeah, four. yeah, four. So, uh, later in the year, we'll start probably right at the beginning of extensions. Right now, I still got to take care of my extensions. Um, and we're a teacher down. Mrs. Holland is out. Wait, how, is he, how did he get it? They don't know. So notice this headline says skepticism surrounds. To check what he's done, they hypothesize will take a year or two. What, what, what's the truth? What's the truth? So I need to dig into this. Mr. Um, Estes just hit me with this this morning. But if you want to read more about it, just Google the Riemann hypothesis, R-I-E-M-A-N-N, -N, um, and you will get the information. So when I Googled this, this is one of the first articles. Um, like this is 21 hours ago, so that didn't even come up last time. Um, but like, here's why we care about attempts to prove the Riemann. Wait, what is the Riemann? Uh, so it depends on what part of it you look at, but it's talking about um, primes and their distribution. Hmm? I don't want to subscribe. What do you mean distribution? So go look it up, right? I, I am here to spur your interests, but not necessarily to give you all information. Mm -hmm. I am in the wrong set of tabs. There we go. So is it cool enough that we should... What's the... I mean, it's interesting. I... So, what, so there's multiple facets to the Riemann hypothesis. There's actually um, at least, I believe, like six problems with a million dollar prize attached to them, um, which like rich people have donated money to say like, well, I couldn't solve it. Here, you do. Here's money. Like, and there's just this fund of money. Um, yeah, sure, kind of like that. Um, but these people are now dead, and they never turned in their homework. So, yeah. um, but this problem has been unsolved for like 160 years, right? So, R I E. M A N N. Do you prove that it doesn't work properly? Uh, no, we like so. It's not like proof yes or no. It's like this conjecture of like, can we figure out da 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 da? da. Like, yeah, can you manipulate this? Can't like okay. so. Um, you have to figure out a way for it. And there has been, um, I forget how long ago it was, but there was like a college student who solved one of these, I believe. Um, so don't think that age is a restrictor. Um, actually, the older you get, the more functionally fixed your brain is, and it's harder to think in different ways. So you actually have a leg up, being that you're younger and your brain still has plasticity. It, you can like rewire it. And we also have a leg down, a leg down because we haven't been through as many years. Wait, yeah. is, there, is the horse 17 to 22? No. No, it's 29 to 34. I need to move the stuff over there. Exactly. Well, I want to know the exact numbers. 29 to 34. Just review. review. Okay. Twenty-nine to thirty-four. Uh, free shots. We could go. Oh, so this is where things get even more interesting. Back when I was in TV, uh, whatever they called it, I don't know, TV studio or something like that. We would go to the basketball games, and very quickly I got rather confused because I am not much of an athlete. You're an athlete. I am an athlete. I never played basketball, and I never understood what a one and one. Is. A one and one is when you get fouled, but the only way you get the second foul shot mm -hmm. is if you make the first something. You are impressive. So, <laughs> if you miss foul shot one, you're done. Right? Because like, they're like, oh, you suck it out of here. But if you make foul shot one, you get another one. 
which is like seems backwards to me. What happened? Um, <laughs> Wait, where are you doing the game? So his probability. This you haven't solved one like this. This is new. It's an eye on in a couple minutes. His probability of making a shot when he steps up to the free throw line, you know, seventy percent. So his probability of missing is thirty percent. What's the probability? Forty-nine over hundred. No, I don't think so. No, because then the one where he misses the first. So, calculate the probabilities. But I'll give you all three, so you just have more. That he makes zero points. That he makes one point, and that he makes two points. And remember, they should all add up to one hundred percent. Wait, what's the square root of seven? Nope. I don't know what's down the square. 49. 49, okay. How do you not have the square root of 49? I understand over 49% that he makes both. That he makes both. But, I mean, that's close enough. How not? How not? That would be 49. I didn't find it. Seven, 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 seven. You made the first one over one and one. Uh, All you have to do is make the second one. You add one. You add like three. But then forty-three multiplied by one. Twenty-three. Here, what are you? This adds up to what? Three point zero. Oh. Oh. Now wait. Then how do you do this? Yeah. So these add up. Wait. This makes sense. Yes. Huh, who would have thought math makes sense? This seventy wow. percent, this top region should add up to seventy yes. percent. Wow. Because that's the probability that he made shot one. It doesn't matter that we split it. It's got to be seventy percent. When we split it, then we got to do the compound probability, where this becomes forty nine percent, like Satya was saying, point seven squared times four nine, and then here point seven times point two. Have a wonderful day. You sound like a balloon losing air. It is a balloon losing air. That's just his brain. Part of the whole thing. I thought he was going to lose his shot. Then you get so light that you close to the air.